Hello everyone, I love the look of these three antique wooden doors. That one in the centre I'd chosen to use in our bedroom, but I came across a problem straight away. This door was not only too short to fit into the door frame, but it was too narrow as well. It's only wood I thought to myself, so let's make it bigger. And that's what I did. And this is what it looks like after I did it. And what I did is covered in the first video. I've placed a link in the description of this video if you need to find that first one. So, this door is now taller and wider than it once was. Now, in this video we'll be covering the following things. How to fit a rim lock to the door. How to and where to cut the keyhole. How to fit an escutcheon plate. Now isn't that a lovely word? Escutcheon. It's that brass plate just there. It fits around the keyhole. Next, we'll fit the door handles and the door rows. And then the last thing we'll be fitting is the latch key or the striker plate to the door frame. To do that we'll have to cut into the architrave. Now there's another good word, architrave. Anyway, as you can see there's lots to cover so we best be getting on with it. Here we are at the beginning of video 2. This door now needs to be fitted into the bedroom door frame. I've shown how to shape and hang a door once before so let's have a bit of a recap before we skim over that process. What you're looking at now is from a previous video. You see me rabbiting on and describing in detail how I size and hung a door in a door frame. Because I've already videoed this process, I'm not going to bore you even further by taking you through it all again. In this video, I'll gloss over the sizing and hanging bit. If you're a glutton for punishment and want to see that previous video, it's this one. I'll place a link in the description at the end of this video. Right, it's time to start that glossing over of the fitting of the door into the door frame. Here I am talking about the width of the door and what a wonderful job I made of it, keeping it all within one millimetre from the top to the bottom. The top face of the door is at 90 degrees to the side, but the original lower face is at a slight angle. I will true that up before fitting. We're up in the bedroom now looking at the door frame. I filled the original fixing holes for the hinges with wooden stakes. The glue has dried now and it's time to cut the stakes level with the surface of the paint. I'm using that small pull saw again. I've taken measurements of the door frame and now need to cut both sides of the door. I'm now sanding the very straight, very sharp edge the Festool TS55 plunge saw riding on its guide rail has produced. I feel I must mention these wonderful tools as they cost me a bloody fortune. I turn the door, mark out the width, cut the second side and then sand back the sharp edges again. John gives me a hand to carry the door upstairs. We drop it off in the bedroom. Slide it into the door frame, holding it in place with wooden wedges. Remember, fitting a door is explained in detail in this previous video. Next job is to mark out where the hinges are going to fit. Make sure you have the correct side of the door and the correct edge. One side of the hinge needs to be sunk into the side of the door. Using a wood chisel, cut around the outline of the hinge on the side of the door. Cut around the edge of the door as well. Make sure these edge cuts are deep enough and then start to remove material. Keep going until one side of the hinge fits in the cutout you've just formed and the surface of the hinge is level with the surface of the side of the door. Do the same thing where the second hinge is going to fit. With the cutouts at the correct depth and nice and flat, fit the hinges. Mark hole centres with a bradle and then screw in the screws. We now know that the door fits into the door frame up in the bedroom really quite nicely. So the next job to do is to fit the rim lock onto the door so we have a means of keeping the door closed. Now the when this goes in position, two holes have to be drilled through the, the door, one for the door knob spindle and the other one for the key spindle, because this will come through from the other side as well as being able to lock from this side as well. Now the way I intend to get these two holes in the correct position is to first of all screw the rim lock in position. Now it has three securing holes, one two and three and I've kept the original screws here 
the old screws I've left the paint on them as well and they'll be going through uh, in those three positions there's also two small countersunk screws which go through the front panel one there and one there again these are the original screws that came out of the uh, the lock when we took it off now once that's screwed in position then I can use a drill to to spot the center of that hole and I can drill through there and then uh, and then make that uh, the appropriate size for the spindle the hole required for the key uh, needs to be in line with this top shaft here and I can get that fairly easily by spotting through with with this drill in fact this is a long series drill so I can not only dot I can drill all the way through the the door and ensure that the top hole of the keyhole is in the right position uh, for this shaft and once it's through I can then open up the hole so it's a clearance size for the shaft of the key now I don't want to put a hole through there so it's just that one hole that needs to be drilled through the door and then the the clearance for the blade I'm going to be cutting out with a small a fret saw but we'll be looking at that later the reason we have to be careful making the hole for the key is this is the plate that goes on the other side of the door it's called the escutcheon plate and you can see that there's not that much meat around here and there's very little meat between the the hole and the two securing screws that go through here now this is secured on with two small countersunk screws you have here these are the original screws and uh, if you make the the hole just a little bit too big like if I put the drill through here you can see that uh, that hole starts actually to come into this hole here so, and that's why you have to be careful when you're making the elongation for the blade of the key so we've got to be careful when we make that hole the door and the rim lock are around about 100 years old. I want them to look smart, but not brand new. The dings and dents the door has collected over the years will be left in the wood, and that will show through the new paint. The rim lock has been rebuilt, but some paint left on its surface under the varnish. I'm using its original screws, complete with paint on their heads, to hold it in place. To mark their positions, I run a drill through the top hole of the keyhole, and also through the door handle spindle hole. The holes go right through the door. More on this a little later. I remove the back plate from the rim lock and then use a vacuum cleaner to clean out all the wood dust the drill had brought in. I was going to cut the keyhole but decided to get some of the sanding out of the way first. I clear the door of tools then get to work with the RO90 sander and a coarse 40 grit sanding wheel. This is the side of the door that was against a plastic sheet as the wood glue was curing and as I said before the glue that oozed out of the joint spreads between the plastic sheet and the job it's a pain to remove it clogs the sanding discs and it just seems to laugh at you I cut most of it off using a chisel the dust extraction from the RO90 is really quite good I'm wearing the mask as the door being so old may have lead based paint on it and it's best to be safe and sorry now this is a normal problem you have when you're sanding the varnish or whatever is on that door is clogging up this wheel now this uh, sanding disc is a is a 40 grit but it's an old 40 grit and uh, I use this just to get rid of the uh, the large inaccuracies uh, on the surface but you can see that the paint has gummed this up now the way that I've found that I can get this off I've got this old knife here I use for uh, scraping it's in my scraping bag now if I go across the back of the of the sanding disc now I'm scraping quite hard against this abrasive surface but it can't do any good at the moment because it's blocked so if this does blunt the surface uh, it does bring it back again and I've been doing this quite often so it's, it's not too bad but you can see that it does bring off the goop and you can take it right to the edge it takes a minute or so but it is quite now this here is really quite quite thick look and that and that clips off now if anyone has any other ideas on how to get these things clean um, please let me know 
on the on the finer discs if they get blocked what i've found uh, is a good uh, a good way of getting rid of it is get some old plastic bags tie them together so it's really hard so you've got a lump of plastic and then with the disc running hold the plastic against the surface and that tends to drag out the uh, the debris that's caught within the, the grit of the wheel but anyway you can see the idea we've got half of the disc is is clean now and it only means you can see it only takes a, a few seconds to do it carry on with the sanding turn the door over and start on the other side I come across more of the oozed out wood glue over the top of the door wood chisel gets it off finish the sanding with 120 grit wheel I was about to cut the uh, new keyhole I drilled the hole for it and went down to get the saw when I came back I thought well I'll, I'll do a little bit of sanding first well I got a bit carried away on the sanding so the, the door is now sanded on both sides uh, I've still got to saw the uh, the keyhole which I'll be doing later because I think what I'm going to do now is fill all the gaps around the edge of the panels and also between all the pieces of wood where it's opened up over the years remember this was stored in the garden shed for a few years so as it gets hot and cold humid and then dries out the wood's been moving and the, the some of the joints have cracked so I need to get them filled as well so let's start the filling so here I am using the filler to get rid of the cracks the filler dries quite quickly on the flat surfaces I sand it back with a Merca sander and that's fitted with a 120 grit sanding sheet for the machined edges around each of the panels I use the same 120 grit sanding sheet but it's an old one which I've rolled up and that enables me to get into all the corners I now want to cut the keyhole in the door I've been down to the workshop and returned with a coping saw <clears throat> now with a coping saw you can actually turn the the blade around within the the frame so that means that I can put the coping saw blade through the hole and cut in this direction now I do have to cut at a slight angle because the the rim lock has actually been machined such that the key sits in at an angle in fact it hasn't been machined there's a mismatch between the front and the back and uh, that means that the key sits at an angle so I've got to cut this hole through the door at a slight angle anyway so let's get this saw in the hole I now have the coping saw blade put through the hole now a coping saw can be used as a push saw or a pull saw it just depends which way round you put the blade with this particular hole with this slot that I'm going to be cutting I'm going to cut it from the top of the door so I'm going to make this a traditional saw so this is going to be a push saw and that's the way that I have the blade and the teeth are pointing downwards in this image you can see the angle the keyhole must be cut at this angle must be maintained or the key will not line up with the keyhole in the rim lock I fit the blade of the coping saw through the hole I've drawn lines on each side of the door to follow with the saw I need to stick to these lines to maintain the required angle the hole must be cut at once I have the basic keyhole I need to adjust it to the correct fit if you're ever cutting a keyhole be very careful it's so easy to make it too large now what does that matter you may say well it's all to do with the escutcheon plate I'll show you why a little later here is the end of the key sticking out of the new keyhole time to prime the door I've already painted over any knots with knotting paint this should ensure that in the future no stains will come through the paint from the oils in the knots I use a vacuum cleaner to remove any dust then ready the rollers and the paint tray first I paint the details around the panels with a brush and then fill in with a small roller Both sides and all the edges of the doors have been painted with a first coat of primer and it's now dry I use a Merca sander with a 120 grit sheet on all the flat surfaces and an old sanding sheet with a small block of wood to sand the details around the panels 
The primer has highlighted some gaps and holes. I go around with the filler on both sides of the door, and once the filler is dry I sand it back again using the 120 grit sanding sheet. On with the second coat of primer, and then when it's dry I sand it back. On with the first coat of top coat. Once it's dry I turn the door over and paint the second side. Once that's dry I paint the door with its second coat of top coat, and on both sides. With all the painting done I can refit the rim lock. I make sure the key still fits in the keyhole through the door, and also that the door handle spindle can turn in its hole. This is the other side of the door. Here is a close up of the keyhole on the right, and the door handle spindle hole on the left. This is the original escutcheon plate. The pointy bit at the top is all that's left of the cover that would hang down over the hole. That's long since broken off. It's this plate you can have trouble with if you've made the keyhole too large. The two securing holes are very close to the edge of the keyhole. If too close you'd have to angle the screws to get them to screw in, and that would look horrible. In fact if you look just here, the lower hole has been elongated already. We're ok, we have enough room to fit the screws. Here the original screws have been fitted, and we're about to find out if the key still fits. It's looking good! It's a snug fit, and it locks the door. What more could one ask for? On the other side of the door, the door handle is supported by the brass bush in the case of the rim lock. On this side of the door the handle is supported by this. This is a door handle rose, it's secured to the door by two screws. Here are the screws, and here they are in place, securing the rose. Once the handle is fitted, you can see the rose supports the handle around its base, just here. John gives me a hand to carry the door upstairs and fit it into the door frame. We're getting so close now. This is the last piece to be fitted. It's called the latch key or striker plate. As you can see it's attached to one of the legs of the door frame. I've had to cut a piece of the architrave away to get it to fit in the correct position. This is a latch, and this is a deadbolt. The striker plate is in the correct position when it can contain both the latch and the deadbolt from the rim lock. It must also not fail against the door or the rim latch body as the door closes. Remember this is how the door looked when we first brought it out of the garden shed. It now looks like this from the outside of the bedroom. The old door again, just in case you'd forgotten. And this is how it looks now from the inside of the room. So the bedroom door is refurbished, and it's looking so much better than it did when we first brought it out of the garden shed. It's also looking a little bit wider, and a little bit taller. Could you do something like this? Of course you can. And with that this video is at an end. Take care everyone, and I'll see you next time. Could you do something like this? Of course you can.